Okay, five dollars. Continuing on from the early 1950s where there was the Federal Reserve note, the United States note, and the silver certificate. The Federal Reserve note is on a series 1950A while the other two are synchronized to series 1953. They're also synchronized together and all having their treasury seal on the same side. And with a number over it, five, five, and five in this case. And um, scroll work is substantially similar, except as is appropriate for the particular thing. So in this case, this has this, uh, this note is legal tender for all debts, public and private, and is redeemable in lawful money at the United States Treasury or at any Federal Reserve Bank. Whew. The United States of America will pay to the bearer on demand five dollars. And here, this note is a legal tender at its face value for all debts, public and private, over a gray number five, because there's no uh, Federal Reserve Bank applicable to this one. The United States of America will pay to the bearer on demand five dollars. And then, of course, the silver certificate's the one that's a little bit different because it's actually backed by silver on hand. So here, we have this certifies that there is on deposit in the treasury of the United States of America, five dollars in silver payable to the bearer on demand. Whew. And it's a little note here is this certificate is legal tender for all debts, public and private. So at least things were made more consistent at that point in time. We know that the backs are pretty much the same. No real discernible differences. None of them have any of in God we trust. Okay, now as we move through a few of the signature changes and letter advances, 50A goes to 50B, 53 goes to 53A. Um, so, but nothing else, you know, and uh, Humphrey gets replaced by Anderson. But nothing else really changes. Now, moving again to the next one, it's the same thing. Now we go to 1953. 50C and then 53B and 53B as we get to Elizabeth Rudolph Smith and C. Douglas Dillon. So, but again, nothing important has changed yet. Now as we get to the era of Catherine O'Hay Granahan, stuff starts happening. So let's start with the Federal Reserve notes. Well, alongside the 1950D, which is printed in the old fashion, which they print it wet and it shrinks a little bit so all the pictures are a little bit smaller. The newer type of printing prints dry, so it just prints and there it is, which means they had to deal with the fact that the pictures of the, you know, in this case, Abraham Lincoln is a little bit bigger. So what they did, you can see there's a fairly large gap between the bottom of it filled with we'll pay to the bearer on demand, which is now just replaced with uh, bringing this whole bottom of it, you know, right, consistent, right almost on top of $5 and moving up the ribbon into invading the space a little bit where before it was outside that space. So that allows for the picture to be slightly bigger. As you can see, the whole verbiage that all redeemable and lawful money business is gone now. It's just this note is legal tender for all debts, public and private. All that will pay to the bear on demand is just gone. It's just United States of America, $5. Bigger picture, still the old seal. And of course, the other big change they've been trying to get in since series 1957 with the $1 and 63 with everything else. They added in God we trust where before that wasn't there. So... That's what happened. But there's also the United States note. And uh, the 1953C is consistent with all of what had been gone before. No real changes at all. Not even in God Be Trust or anything like that. But alongside that is the new printing style and series 1963. Again, it's all Grand Head and C. Douglas Dillon. And now in this case, once again, you see some changes. So all this note is a legal tender at its face value. Now it just gets replaced with 
This note is legal tender for all debts, public and private. Well, that's clean. Um, you have the United States of America will pay to the bearer on demand five dollars to just United States of America five dollars. Well, that's easy. And uh, as with the other case, the picture is expanded a little bit by bringing the bottom of it down almost right up against five dollars and putting a little ribbon at the bottom with his name on it, kind of invading the oval instead of being entirely on the bottom of it. So this is how they kept this all fitting on there, despite the fact that if you look carefully, you can see his image is just a little bit bigger on the new one than the smaller because the old was printed wet and would shrink and the new was printed dry and doesn't shrink. So that took care of that. And once again, also on the reverse, the same other changes made where before the there's no in God we trust. Now there's in God we trust. So that's that takes care of that. So the silver certificate, however, was not released for that year, for that series year, even though they were printed. Oh well. So that's really all there is for all intents and purposes. Moving on to the next phase, now all of the United States notes and silver certificates, well, except for the $2 United States note, Granahan and Fowler are pretty much gone. So now all we've got, we still have the old series, now up to 1950E and the new series, 63A. All the same changes, still the long verbiage and the will pay stuff. The short suite here, no extra verbiage. We still got the original seal here. You can see the, the smaller picture with Lincoln underneath and lots of room for this stuff. The bigger picture with the Lincoln ribbon kind of invading the oval a little bit and right up against $5 to uh, accommodate the bigger size. And as other cases, the uh, Series 1950 has no one God we trust. The Series 1963 does. This, however, is the end of using the old printing method. So after that, we're, we're transition totally to the new printing method. And now, 1969, we do one more thing. And that is we update the Treasury seal to this new, you know, the Department of the Treasury, 1789. And of course, new signatures, Andrew Elston and David M. Kennedy. So that's all that happens there. No further changes on the back. And 69 continues on for Series A, where, well, we've got Cavus instead of Elston. We skipped over Elston and Kennedy again. And Cavus and Connolly. And then we have uh, Banuelos and Connolly. And then we have Banuelos and Schultz. And these are the last times you'll see letters B and C, anything beyond A, ever take place is in Series 1969. So, starting with 1974, you've got Neff and Simon. And the only thing interesting left is that in the Neff and Simon, the $2 will come back, but that's another denomination. From this point on, it gets boring for quite a while. And so, that's where this ends. That's all there is for five.